Romans chapter 1. And uh, back in Ohio, Brother Richard actually done a PowerPoint presentation with his message. And uh, many of us was in awe. So I'm thinking if the, if the teacher can teach, we should be able to do the same thing. So anyway, this, uh, we do appreciate the time for Grace School of Bible have us up here. It is an honor and a privilege to be amongst the members of the body of Christ. And my message this morning is about those uh, who never heard. And it's Romans chapter 1, verses uh, 16 through 25. And let's read that. Romans chapter 1. Starting in verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth of right and, and unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they, they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew, knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the image made like a, to incorruptible men and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up, up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor his, their own bodies between them, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Father, once again, we thank you for this day of grace. We thank you for the things you've given us. As we go through this morning message, we hope that it may enlighten some people that we have a God that's not dead. We have a God who is Jehovah and living. And Lord, we just ask that we have an open heart and mind into this message once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This message study today is about the fact that everyone is actually does know and has heard through creation and the conscience, and if not by the gospel itself. You know, Paul, as we just read, Paul just explained some things about salvation through Jesus Christ. It's the gospel of Christ that saves us today, right? That you believe Christ died and buried and rose again, you're saved forever, eternally. But he also explained some things about unrighteousness, that the wrath of God is revealed. So when you understand the wrath of God has been revealed, you also understand that you need a gospel, don't you? So that's what saves us from this world. So when he explains some things, what we're going to look at... Let me catch my breath for a minute. Look, it got warm in here for some reason. It was just nice. But we're going to look at some things that God used creation and the stars and the words and the people to show that he has a witness and, it ha and it's never been unseen. You know, that, that type of thing. So before the written word of God, you can be turning to Genesis chapter 1, if you will. Get Psalms 19 and stay in Romans chapter 1. Before the written word, God spoke some things. And in Genesis 1, 14 through 16, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day and night. And let there... Uh, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament and the heaven and, and to give the light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So what did he do? He made signs and seasons. I'll put some slides together up here. Uh, so... The one on the right has to do with some health issues, don't it? Any, anybody ever heard of Farmer Almanac? Almanac? Yeah. How many farmers we got in here? We've got one, two. How many gardeners? Well, down home, you know, uh, we use signs. After May 10th, you didn't take your long handles off. 
you because it was still cold you know after certain pro crops and stuff but we got uh, people that follow signs when we have health issues don't we but he also the zodiac is is here so when god created the heavens and earth he set signs up there in psalms 19 the heavens declare the glory of god and the firmament showed that this his handiwork so, uh, psalms 19 1 through 4 Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where, where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through the, all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, etc. Through creation, that creation is a public display of God's handiwork uh, that's speaking forth the glory of God. And it's a creation of testimony what God is doing up there. And it gave a witness of God Almighty. Back in times past, if you think about it, there was a revelation of God the Creator and what He was doing through His works. And that revelation and works was taught doctrine. Now, we, we, we in Psalms, you don't have to turn there, but Psalms uh, 147 says, He telleth the number of the stars. He calls them all by names. You know, the book of Job talks about those names don't it Pallades and Oren and even Maseroth but we got people out there today for $39.99 they will name a star after you but God said he named them and numbered every one of them you know what they want don't they they want your money that's what they want you don't have to worry about naming a star after yourself you're a saint of the most high God if you're saved today and but the Maseroth means the 12 signs uh, uh, and they're named and they're numbered and they have divisions and they're associated with them those names and numbers so if you think about the zodiac many of you heard the zodiac it marks the degrees and the stages about the sun path around and many of you know who josephus was okay he supposedly says that the, it's this originated with Adam and Seth and Enoch, and it, they taught this orally before the written word of God. Now, many of us was listen. I was listening. To my mother-in-law tell some stories this morning when she was growing up about her daddy putting uh, 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 hair. They was slicking back their hair, and he got to the uh, kitchen sink, and he put shoe polish, white shoe polish, in his hair. You know, you don't get those stories unless you orally hear those things. You know, we talk about eating fried bologna not too long ago but E.W. Bullinger has a book out there and he he talks about some unusual zodiac signs that he gives and the interpretation of I'll share this with you right quick Virgo is right there let me point this right here right here see her Leon's right here Leo is right here <laughs> now Leon's right there but uh, uh, so so if you go around, Virgo is the Virgin Mary. This is his interpretation, but listen to this. The Libra is a, a scales and his sins must be paid for. Scorpio is sins brings death. The archer, Sag, uh, was it Sagittarius? Is the archer, that's demonism. Capricorn is the goat fish. Earth is corruption. Um, Aquarius is the a water pourer, living water, of no, a flood of Noah. Aquarius, I just mentioned that. Pisces is uh, the fish, God's remnant. Aries is the ram sacrifice. Taurus is a bull, bull of resurrection. Gemini is the twins of Christ's dual nature. Cancer is a gathering of the redeemed. Leo, Leo is the lion, the king. There's 12 of those associated in the, in the uh, universe up there. And you remember the dream of Joseph? He had a dream about the, sun, the moon and the sun and the 11 stars. And his brothers didn't like that, did they? They said, we're not bowing down to you. But then they eventually bow down to him. This has to do with, with some future events that God is going to take place. And a lot of that revelation out there and the stars will play out through the earth, primarily through the nation Israel. Okay. Uh oh back up anybody seen these pictures before that's the woman and the lion all in one of the sphinx 
And you know there's not a country in the world that don't have a sphinx somewhere around them? And that, that's, that's the paganism understanding of the zodiac, and it can be found everywhere. Ever. We usually look at the one in, in Egypt, don't we, as far as the sphinx. But this is in Colombia, South America. But anyway, the constellations, if you think about it, is not just a bunch of stars up there that we can pick whatever we want to pick up. Astronomy is godly. And here's the definition of it. The science which teaches the knowledge of the celestial bodies, their magnitudes, motions, distance, periods of revolution, revolutions, aspects, eclipse, and so on, so on. So you can look at what God did up there and, and say it's godly. But astro astrology is satanic. And, there, and, and, and the definition of astrology is a science which teaches to judge of the effects and influence of the stars and to foretell future events by their situations and different aspects. This science was formerly in great request as men ignorantly supposed the heavenly bodies to have a ruining influence over the uh, uh, physical and moral world but is now universally exported by true science and philosophy. Institutions out there today are, are teaching that to be truth. Truth. But astrology, uh, astronomers officially recognize there are 88 constellations up there. there are, and it covers the entire northern and southern sky, by the way. There are 14 men and women, 9 birds, 2 insects, 19 land animals, Ten water creatures, two centaurs, one head of hair, a serpent, a dragon, a flying horse, a river, and 29, was that intimate, 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 um, ob, thank you, uh, uh, I'm glad you love me, but anyway, objects that are represented in the nice night sky, I like to think somewhere right in there there's an ice cream cone, I haven't found it yet, but I'm hoping that one day they will be, but anyway, some say that the reason that the Tower of Babel was destroyed is because they devoted the study to this and not the Creator instead. And, 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 and that this has been a confirm in the presence uh, of astrology signs among the ruins. Astrology was punishment by death in Israel's days. As the observer of time, they would kill you for doing this or, or studying this. But today, nearly every language in the world contains at least 12 signs of those zodiacs and they get it out of the Hebrew Mazarov. But we know that signs are still there, don't we? But Satan, the prince and power of the air, has corrupted the interpretation. And, you know, that's to me, that's something that you really got to think about. You got to see through the force, don't you, to see who God, the creator, really is. But back in Psalms 19, you're still there, right? Psalms 19, 1 through 6, he talks about the revelation of the Creator in the heavens and refers to the teaching of the starry heavens. He's using creation to talk about who he is and what he, what's he all about. And the doctrine when, uh, is that the written, was written in the heavens, was preserved using Genesis 3, 15 and the heavenly signs. But in verse 7, Things change a little bit. He goes from the witness of God in creation to the signs of the heavens to the revelation of the covenants of God in his written word. He starts to change the visual to, uh, instead of oral, he's going to the written word. In verse 7, he says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the souls, and the testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. Verse 4, he talks about that line has gone out through all the earth, and, and the words... To the end of the world, that he set a tabernacle. Verse 11 says, Moreover, them, that them is the written word of God that they have now. Is them that is thy servant worn, and in keeping them is a great reward. Isn't it today a great reward to know the word of God and have the word of God? It really is. And the, and, and the, but before the written word was, they read the zodiac, guys. And now they read and we read the written word of God. But what about those who haven't heard? You've got to keep that in your mind now. That's the study. So don't get lost in the translation and the pictures and stuff. What about the, the focus now is going to the written word 
and primary through his people, Israel, and that through a body cross eventually. This time period right here, many of you know about it. It's funny, I was sharing yesterday, I was looking up the word aloha in German. And uh, the uh, app I had was named Babel. I'm like, what is coincidence? Yeah, that's what it is. But here we have find something major happen upon the earth. It's just a matter of 150 to 200 years after Noah, the flood, that they started this. That's not a long time, is it? You think that just 150 years ago, you would, uh, you would know what had happened, that you don't want to repeat that again. And, and the flood happened, and Satan's, and, and man began to worship himself and the satanic host. In Romans chapter 1, you're there, we referred back to the rebellious man and how he did not retain God in his knowledge. Instead, he became an idolizer of himself and the creatures that surround him. You know, it says in Romans 1, 21, it says, Because that, when they knew, knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither was thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and foolish heart was darkened. That's not good. Vain imaginations, and that heart gets darkened. They changed the light of God that he had given them. The glory of God, as we listened to last night, is a wonderful thing, isn't it? You know, that coat of many colors that Joseph had, what an awesome display of God's glory on a, on a human being. You know, and today you, you got the glory of God living inside of you. You know, we may not look like, a, you know, the glory of God right now, but I'll, I'll see a rainbow. Every one of us different colors and stuff like that, which we represent the word, you know, glory of God. But who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who's blessed forever. You know, Satan's plan, this plan right here was Satan's plan from the beginning. And it followed down into Eve, and, and Eve got deceived and she said, you can be like gods. And, you know, the five I wills has been mentioned uh, in this, this week already. And Isaiah is, is, is Satan's worshiping himself. And it does not stop till it gets way over here and in, 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 in where he sits up as God. He is going to be God amongst the heathen and the people there. The five I wills. And he's sitting on the throne in Revelation. Mankind is at the tower has departed from the knowledge of God and became a bunch of idol worship Gentiles. But what about those who have never heard? They still have heard. They still had the creation. So what did God do? In Romans 1, we know that God gave them up, didn't he? And, 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 and that the fact that that time period in Genesis chapter 11, uh, man rejected the revelation of God in the written word in the stars. They rejected it. They corrupted it. And they perverted the revelation. So man refused to give God the glory. You know why? Pride. Pride lifts up. And pride takes over. And look what I'm doing. You've got to be careful because we can lift our own self up that way. You know, I was listening to Marvin going from 300 to 6. You know, he, he still had more than Adam and Eve. You know, that's nothing to be complaining about. I'm, I quit being impressed with numbers in churches. You've got to be faithful with the ones that's there and continue to teach them. You set the table, guys. You can't make nobody eat it, but you set it. And the ones that are there, they're going to get fed. Amen? Amen. And then, then the God gives them up and gives them over. The times of ignorance has begun, but the witness of God is still clearly seen. Still clearly seen. So God goes, to, in the fact, he starts working after this part. He starts working through Abraham and from amongst the nation and through him and his seed, they will know God the creator. With the times of ignorance, uh, what I'm, some of the slides I'm going to show you right now has to do with what happens when you depart from God what happens when you start uh, lifting yourself up and they start professing themselves to be wise, they became what? These are gods that people out there in the world are, are looking, for, uh, looking at. They changed the glory of the incorruptible God in an image made like the corruptible man and the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping, crawling things. Many of you have you seen these for your own selves and they're still around. 
These next couple presentations, if I can do it, these are found in the state of Ohio, the heart of it all. Okay? That's, that's the motto, and many of uh, the Ohio representatives are sitting here, so they know where I'm talking about and what, what, what this is about. But these slides are, are actual places or these places are actually places in the state of Ohio, not far from where many of us live. And, and the fact that these are no different than the creature worshiping of the stars of the, and of themselves. And the times of ignorance gave birth to these things. And you don't have to think about Ohio. You've probably got them here in Illinois and, and Missouri and all that area like that. But this is a, uh, the, uh, the Newark Earthworks. And there's three of them in there and consist of that. But down there in that big circle, there's three mounds. And they say it's, uh, that's, it's uh, eagle. They call it the eagle mound. And there's two wings outstretched. You know what that is? That's creature worship. Right there. Then these right here, uh, if you notice, the patterns are still the same. But this place right here has 12 gates going into it. You know something else has 12 gates? They didn't just come up with this pattern, but they're, they're, they got a, 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 a bad interpretation of what this is. And then you think about the circles and the squares and the mounds, patterns after patterns after patterns. And every one of these earthworks that you're looking at has sacrificial mounds that they go to and, and, sur and, 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 and sacrifice their gods. This one right here is funny. I was going down through there and I saw a sign going through Marietta, Ohio, and it said Criteria 900 AD. I'm like, what? I pulled that tractor over, parked it, and ran back three blocks to take a picture to take a picture of it. And supposedly it's a water walk that that was way up here and it was stretched all the way down the Ohio River. That was built in 900 A.D., supposedly. Now, where was you in 900 A.D.? <laughs> you know, where's Columbus in 900 A.D.? So these things are very, very, I don't know, I, I guess they're explainable. But, man, you know, you think about some things. This right here is Fort Ancient. It's not far out of Columbus, Ohio area. It looks like runways, doesn't it? And they've got two serpent uh, serpents there that in the winter they don't do it now but this is what the, the thing that in the winter time and the summer time they would stick a pole at the head of that serpent and for 32 minutes when that sun come up it, it, it gave a shadow over that serpent so what are they worshiping there you know watching it come alive and all that and in the middle of that big one every 18 and a half years the moon would come up and shine right directly right there. And that's when they would do their sacrifices and stuff. That's moon worship, isn't it? Worshiping the creature more than the creator. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter, uh, uh, you don't have to turn there. Miamisburg, Mound Cities. They're all over. And you know what God told Israel to do when they went into the land? He didn't have, as brother mentioned yesterday, the tolerance level. He didn't have any when this happened. When he told them to go into the land and destroy. He said utterly destroy all the places. Where the nations which ye shall possess and serve their gods. Upon the high mountains. Upon the high hills. Upon every green. Uh, and, uh, under every green tree. These are places that they put. Their gods on. This is a fascinating one. The serpent mound. This thing's over 1300 some. Uh, feet long and you, can you see it the snake I'll give you a better picture this is a drawing of it and you know Genesis chapter 3 and Revelation chapter was it 12 okay Genesis chapter 3 if you don't remember I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise his thy head and the, thou shall bruise his heel Revelation talks about, and the tail drew one-third of the stars from heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to deliver, to devour her child as soon as it was born. 
And you think about in 1901, this uh, reverend down there said, this is the Garden of Eden because this is a serpent and he's got the apple giving it to Eve. And they believed that. And most of these earthworks that I'm looking at, they discovered them and started researching around the 1800s. But think about that for a second. And I have to share it with this. This is in Adams County, by the way. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, but look at that look at that symbol. Where did they where did they get that from? Didn't we see that there's serpents and dragons in the stars? So they're creature worshiping these things. But he said there's the serpent. Now I have to show this. I did not put the uh, Quicken Loans Arena up there. The champions, <laughs> but. But this is not far where we live. I know uh, this is four miles. The football hall of fame is four miles from my house. Amy actually lives in the back door of it, you know. But the rock and roll hall of F fame, if you notice, it's shaped as a pyramid. Where do you, what, where do you find pyramids at? This is where the world gets their wisdom from, isn't it? But it's it's something. But we know that those things that we just saw, are patterns. But they're not godly, are they? But God did have a pattern in the heavens that uh, that he he preserved. And the, that's the heavenly tabernacle. And he told he told and that was a witness for Israel to show that there was one true God to worship. And he gave Moses a pattern, didn't he? He said, here it is. Make a pattern. And that, was, that did not get corrupted, by the way. And that's what Israel's supposed to have done, and that's what they did in a tabernacle. But didn't they also build a temple, a real temple? A display God amongst the people? But what happened to them? God's chosen people to preserve who he was in this earth and show the creatures who to worship. They become corrupted themselves, didn't they? And they started lifting themselves up. But what about those who haven't heard? So far, everybody's heard. Whether you've seen it or you're going to hear it. So, in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Turn there right quick. We've got, we got a few minutes. What do you know about the book of Deuteronomy? What we call it? The second giving of the what? Law. And this is, this is some instructions for the nation Israel. Now, we can learn from Israel, can we not? Can you really not? Look, can, can you not really learn what not to do? I always thought that I should have wrote the book, What Not to Do. You know, I'm serious, but they already got something for dummies. But, you know, I don't consider myself a dummy, but I do need some help with what not to do. Sometimes I get my hands spanked and, you know, get put in the corner every once in a while. And they take away my ice cream. That's sad. But De Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse uh, 16 it says, lest ye corrupt yourself and make you a graven image, the similitudes of any figure, the, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that uh, flieth in the air, the likeness of any thing that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth, the, and lest thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided into all nations unto the whole heaven. That's Romans chapter 1 that we just read. The fact, what not to do. And because God knew that the people around the nation of Israel was doing that. You know, they influenced Israel, didn't they? They influenced it. In the book of Ezekiel, you don't, he tells of five and twenty men that turned their backs on the mercy seat of God and worshiped the sun as it's coming up. You know, Amos, Amos in uh, Acts 7 tells of their tabernacle, Moloch, and their star, their, their star to God. What does that look like? That's where they got that from, creature worship stuff. And how they made molten images uh, and, and worship and host the, uh, and the host of heaven. You don't worship the host of heaven today. Because it's corrupted up there. And the, so the interpretation of the stars got it corrupted. And the people of God became corrupted. In fact, they did not recognize God himself when he came in the form of his son. 
the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of them. That's how departed they got from the truth. And they didn't follow the word. They didn't believe the word of God, did they? Now, some of them did. Like some of us believe the word of God. But you walk out here in this resort or go around the, around the area, how many people believe in the word of God? Over and over, God told them. And you know what? They just rebelled. Acts chapter 14 and Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 14, Acts chapter 17. We're going back to the times of ignorance because we're moving very rapidly. In Genesis chapter 11, over to the rising Apostle Paul, during the, uh, it was during the times of ignorance, and God's people, the nation Israel, was to be a light amongst all the people. And guess what they did? They became ignorant, didn't they? Them, themselves. In Acts chapter 14, Paul preaches the gospel of grace in Lystra, and he heals a man there. Acts 14 verse 11. And when the people saw that Paul had done what, what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lysonia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. The people, you know what they was doing there? They was idle and worshipped Gentiles, wasn't they? And they thought Paul came down from Mount Olympus. And he says in verse 12, and they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercury. Now, where did they get them things from? from a corrupt uh, vision up there. And they were serving that stuff. And they wanted to worship them. And you know what they did? They started to make a sacrifice to them. And Paul stopped them. Paul and Barnabas stopped them. In verse 15 it says, And, and saying, Sirs, why do, you de- why do ye these things? We also are men in like passion with you and preached unto you, that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made what? Heaven and earth and sea and all the things therein. Turn to the living God. Not a dead God, a living God. And Acts, 16, uh, uh, Acts 14, verse 16, who, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. In time past, you know, Gentiles walked in their own ways. And God allowed it, didn't he? God was tolerable there, wasn't he? Long-suffering is applied, if you think about it. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that, that, that he did good and gave us rain and, and, and from heaven and fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and gladness. You know what Paul was trying to get them to do? Turn to God, wasn't he? Showing them that what he gave them, only God from heaven could give it to them. But things are changing. I recently walked into a place of business, and uh, the woman asked me how I was doing. I said, well, i got one foot in heaven and one on earth. She said, well, that's better than death. I said, no. I said, I'm ready to go. I said, it's better than a second death. She said, oh, it's just whatever you want to believe. For some reason in her life, she got burnt by religion, and she hates God the Creator. So I didn't give up. And she's talking about her son, and a big lightning storm came out, and her, and her son grabbed her mom and said, Mom, come out here and look what God's putting on display. And she said, I never told him about God. I said, you know why? He's got a conscience. And every one of us is born with a conscience, and that conscience is like a meter that points to God, and God says, here I am. I'm waiting. You know, He gives us free will, don't he? He don't violate it. But she was so bitter towards God and the fact that she didn't want to hear nothing about him no more. But I didn't give up. Mother's Day, we we went out to Panera Bread. And and as my custom was, I saw a guy sitting over there and he had these study sheets all over the place. And I said, what you studying? He said, I'm studying the sugar contents of leaves. He was a, what do you call a bot, bot, botanist? Okay. And I said, huh, that's interesting. He goes all these big universities. He's, a, he's got a degree and a, and a half, about this long. And I said, I said, well, let me ask you something. By, by looking at this window and looking at the trees and looking at the stars, and look, what do you think about? What goes through your mind? He said that there's a God. 
that created this. And I'm like, whoa. Because yeah, I'm waiting for him to say, well, you know, man, put this molecule together and, you know, <laughs> and all that stuff. But he refuted that. And that man said there, he said, I'll work with atheists. And I'm constantly telling them that there's no way that this man made this. God, the creator that way. I'm thinking, praise God. You know, so I knew where he was at. Now we started talking about Jesus Christ. Because when you witness the invisible things that God had, it points you to Jesus Christ. It points you to the Holy Spirit, as Richard was talking about last night. The times of ignorance are no more, guys. Acts 17. Acts 17. Another account in Acts 17. Paul, uh, while he was with them in Athens, Acts 17, 16. His spirit was stirred in him when the whole city was given to idolatry. Does that not stir you too, though, when you go into places and you're like, man, the Football Hall of Fame. I'll never forget the first induction I went to. They used to have it on the steps. And ESPN flying the, the Goodyear blimp over, and he says, the football gods are shining down on Canton, Ohio. And I heard that, and I'm like, people believe that. People believe that. But look, Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that ye all, in all things, ye are too superstitious. For as I passed and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. You know what that devotion was? The exact same thing we read in Romans chapter 1, verses 21 through 25. They're worshiping the creature more than the creator. And, and the unknown God, Paul starts to talk about, they got a conscience because they put a God stone up there. And the creation, and Paul goes on and says in verse uh, 24 through 26, that God made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he, he is the Lord of heaven and earth and dwelleth not in temples made with hand. And, and for the t- sake of time, he says, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their inhabitation that they should seek the Lord. He allowed that and he allowed them to seek the Lord. That's that conscience, guys, that every one of us is born with a conscience. But what happens when you keep denying it? You put that light out, don't you? Put that light out. You got to remember in, Paul, in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul tells exactly how we was in times past, don't we? How we walked the course of this world. In closing, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. In whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or d- dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he, who is that he? Jesus Christ, isn't he? And he is the head of the body, the church, who is, in, is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the premise. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that was sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled in the, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and reprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith and ground it and settle, and be not removed, um, moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, wherefore I, Paul, made a minister." That right there tells me there was a gospel that was preached to every creature under heaven. 
And I know you can say, what about the Indians here in Ohio and all the United States and stuff? I believe the gospel has been preached to every creature under the heaven. Because verse 5 says, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, wherein ye have heard before the word of the truth of this gospel, which was coming to you as it is all as it is in all the world, and bring forth fruit as it doth also in you. Let me share this. What about those who haven't heard? The fact is that everyone actually has heard and knows through creation, through conscience, and even through the gospel. Our great God and Father, we thank you so much in our life. We thank you for the time you've given us, and we know that as we have comfort here with one another, there's still a dark and dying world out there that pride is lifted up in their hearts and their minds are blinded. And let us just share the glorious gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.